I'm gonna run And nothing's gonna stop me now No hurdles gonna bring me down Cause I am going I'm going from the crown I'm going for the yeah, crown Yeah, I'm going for the crown Oh Amen. And the word of the Lord today said, do not fear. And the scripture reading is coming from Isaiah 41 and 10. And it read is thus. I'm not a long-winded preacher, so y'all come on with me. I'm not a long-winded preacher, but I'll give you what thus saith the Lord. Amen. It reads, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. In other words, don't lose courage. He said, for I am your God, I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. 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 Today, I looked up being fear, uh, what fear is, and I've said that fear is, um, I've been told that fear <laughs> is false evidence that appears to be real, and I kind of believe that too. But there are two types of fear here today, and there's a fear that reverence God, amen, and there's a fear that is a natural fear, which is a human emotion, which that's where we are today, amen, as a people. However, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the word says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, amen, but of power and love and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit, amen. It's a controlling spirit. You better know it. It is, and it's controlling the atmosphere right now, you know, because so many people are fearful or of everything and anything and anything that the media says and anything that social media says, people begin to get fearful. Amen. I said it's an illusion. Um, and fear is the spirit that can hinder you. It causes you to be so bound up. Amen. So you think, so you think everything is, that's going on is real. It's got to happen. Amen. The Hebrew word for fear is yara. And it means fear not, to fear not. Yara means fear to fear not. I looked up the word fear in the Bible, and it's in there 365 times. Amen. God said today to tell you people not to fear, that you don't have a reason to fear. He said because he's with you. Amen. He promised to never leave you nor to forsake you. He's been with you through the unknown and the known. He's been with you through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. I can say this because we have all feared something during these past few years where we've lived in this thing called the pandemic. There have been many deaths that occurred through it. Some people were sick and still sick. Some people were sick unto death. Some people lost possessions. Some people lost their jobs. Some people lost their businesses, and some church members, some people lost their church members. Church finances were decreased, and the churches were shut down, and so much more. But we know that we serve an awesome God, and he puts no more on us than we can bear. Amen. Don't fear. Don't fear. Don't fear. God was not asleep during the course of this pandemic, and he's still not. He wants us to trust him. Amen? You got to trust God. If you say you know God and you got a relationship with him, you got to trust him. Amen? The word says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I will trust in the name of the Lord thy God. Amen? Hallelujah. I believe that God is speaking, was speaking during this pandemic, and I still believe that he's speaking right now. To be honest, we, he knew that we would be a people that would get comfortable. Amen. We were sitting in our recliners. We were living in our big houses. We were working hard on our jobs. 
Amen. We were just getting too comfortable. We were able to get the things that we desired. Some people worked hard and, you know, purchased homes. And some people got their first time car. And, you know, some people went to college for the first time. I know I was 50 when I went to college. Amen. I got my bachelor's degree. Amen. But I knew that the Lord was with me, even though I was fearful because there were so many young people in there with me. But, and I became a little bit fearful because we all have some fear in us. And that's natural. Amen. People have taken the house of God and made it all about them. That's, yes. It was too much a man that was in control and not God. Even people were more fearful of man than God. Amen. They were doing all they could to please man and not God. It was like the glory of God was taken out of the house of God. Amen. You couldn't even feel the presence of God in the house of God. When you go in some of the houses, it was all about the prophets, all about the pastor, all about the pastor and his children. It was too much flesh, and it made a mess of the church. And God said, hey, look, I got to shut this down. I got to bring my glory back into the house of God. Amen. I got to get myself back in, back in this house and take over where I started. Amen. 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 And guess what? We were blind. We were blind. That's why we didn't see it coming, because we were so comfortable. We had gotten in ourself. We had thought it, you know, it was all about our four and no more. Amen. If you notice, the churches are still empty. There are some churches that are still empty. And God has said one night through prayer that some of these churches were going to shut down. This was before the pandemic. God spoke to me. He said, some of these churches are going to close up some of these doors. And I could see the windows being out of the church. I could see the doors off of the churches. And we could, I could see directly in the church. And God said, this is what I want right now. He said, I'm emptying it out because I got to filter it out. He said, I got to clean out all this mess. And I could see like a wind would blow through the church. And God said, okay. Now I can come back in and be God. And now we can see God. Amen. We can see God. We're not looking to man no more. Man will fail you. Man will let you down. But God will never let you down. Amen. So don't be afraid if you don't see those that used to come to church not come to church. You know, don't be afraid when you don't see Sister Lulu who used to play music back in the church. Amen. God had to clean, cleanse this house. Amen. Amen. Even some people find themselves running from the church. You know, they're running, not even running from the church, they were running from their calling because they were afraid. They became dismayed. They became discouraged. They became depressed. Amen. They couldn't handle what God was giving them. You know, they could when, when everybody was lifting them up and it was a hype. I'm sorry, I'm teaching this. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost. That's what it's called. It's called the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they became so afraid. But God is saying to you today to get back in your rightful places. He said, I am with you whithersoever you go. Amen. Get back in your rightful places. Stop fearing what the enemy can do unto you because man can't do anything to you. He can only do what God allows. Amen. The enemy can only do what God allows. And sometimes we give him too much power. Amen. We give fear too much power. Amen. 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 There's nothing to be afraid of. But one thing for sure and for certain, you're going to face your fears. So stop allowing fear to control your life. Don't give your destiny. Young people, you got a destiny ahead of you. Don't give your destiny away to fear because you're afraid. Amen. Look what God has done in the past few years. Black president. Amen. Black assistant president. Black businesses. On. It's our time. It's our season. We have no reason to fear because God is with us. I have nothing against white people. Don't get me wrong, but I thank God that he's raising us up now. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. From where I came from, I came from down there in Fuquay, Verena, where we looked up to the white people. Now they got to look up to us. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm not prejudiced. But, you know, God is putting us in a, a good place now. 
Appreciate where you are. Appreciate your skin color. Don't be afraid because you're black, whether you're light-skinned or brown-skinned, whatever color you are, green, blue, purple, pink. Embrace who you are in Christ. Amen. Don't fear that. Don't let nobody make you feel, feel like you got to fear who you are because you're, you're, you're uniquely made. Fear, you should be fearfully and uniquely made because you're made by Christ. Amen. Know your place. Know who you are. Amen. You should have more power over fear than it has over you. Amen. Fear should not dictate any of your decisions when it comes to doing the will of God. However, you should let your faith, somebody said faith, faith, dictate your decisions. Amen. Dictate your calling. Dictate your ministry. Dictate your business. Amen. It takes faith. Amen. And I'm reminded of the story of Jonah who ran. Amen. And how God told him to go to Nineveh and preach against the wickedness of the people. Jonah became afraid. He, he was fearful and he ran. But he faced consequences because of his disobedience. Don't got, let God have to deal with you because of your disobedience. Amen. We know the story of Jonah. Jonah thought that he could run and get by doing God's will. But God was with him. Amen. He had promised to be with him. But he allowed that spirit of fear to make him get thrown overboard. And he ended up in the belly of the well for three days in a very uncomfortable place. Amen. But you got to know, too, that God didn't call us to be comfortable. Amen. There's something significant about the number three. Amen. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus rose on the third day. There's something about that number three. Amen. I thank God that he's a God of a second chance because he gave Jonah a second chance. He's so gracious and he's so merciful towards us. Amen. To you, me. Hallelujah. Everyone in here. Amen. When you cry out to the Lord, because Jonah had to cry out to the Lord. Amen. And God heard his cry. And God released him. God had mercy. He released him. And God is having mercy upon you. You know, because you got to trust him. You say you trust him, but you don't trust him. I believe that this is a right now word. I believe this is the word for this house today. Because like I said, we all have walked in fear. So whatever God is calling you to do, block out fear. Out of your mind. Tell the devil, no more fear. No more fear. Amen. So, Jonah was released to pre go and preach to the people. So, the people of God, <laughs> to the people of God. Amen. And he went on and done what he had to do. Amen. After he, after he overcame. Because you can't overcome fear. Amen. Romans 8 and 28 says that, and we know that all these work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we do not have to fear. Amen. But I like to share my testimony. This is my story, and I tell people this is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, we went on a cruise back in 2019, my husband and I and some other couples. And as soon as we returned to Raleigh, I became so sick. I believed that I had corona that time, but they wasn't calling it that because this was like in October 2019. But, in, but I was sick all the way up until they announced that COVID was out. And so I was going back and forth to the doctor, and they were saying this, that, and the other, and wasn't really, didn't really know what was wrong with me. I praise God because I'm still living. And it brought a little fear to me because I thought I was going to die. I literally wasn't sleeping that night. My husband tell you, I was up all night long. I could not sleep. I cried. I prayed. My pastor called. She cried. She prayed with me. And, you know, I was just so, so encouraged, you know, but I was still fearful because I was like, Lord, I am not ready to die. I have not done everything that you have called me to do. Amen. And to be transparent, yes, I was afraid. I was some nights I was terrified. <laughs> Amen. And so I ended up going to, in March, I ended up going to ER. It had gotten so bad. I finally went. In March of 2020, I ended up going to ER. And my husband told you I'm a prayer warrior. I love praying. I intercede. And during the whole course of that time, I kept praying. 
for other people. I kept doing the will of God. I called everybody I know, hey, I was, you was on my heart today. Because you have to continue, even through all that, you have to continue to do God's will. I would call people and pray. I call my daughter and pray. I would call people and just like, they were like, I haven't heard from you in years. Oh, I just called to check on you. Is there anything I can pray for you for? You know, because that, you have to continue in your faith. Amen. And keep building your strength up while you're going through. Even though you might be afraid in, in the back of your mind, but you got to know that God is God. And he's a sovereign God. He's not going to allow anything to happen to you. Amen. And so uh, anyway, during that course, I ended up having surgery on both of my ears. I had a biopsy done on my temples, and they still didn't know. Doctors don't have the answers. I'm sorry to tell you. They don't have all the answers. They're good at what they do, and they're good at their studies. I take nothing from them because they study hard to do what they do. And I kept telling them, I said, well, you don't have the answer. And so <laughs> I said, I understand, you know, what, what you're saying the diagnosis are, but you just don't have all the answers. Amen. I knew that my answer was in God. But like I said, um, it, like, it was really bad. But the Bible says life and death lies in the power of the tongue. So I kept speaking life. I looked in the mirror and I said, you shall live and not die. You're going to live. You're going to do the will of God. You're going to still travel the world. You're going to still go out and do missionary work. You're going to still go across seas and tell somebody that Jesus saves. Amen. You're going to still, you got to speak to yourself. You have to encourage yourself. Amen. I was given the scripture in Psalms 107 by, I think, it may have been my pastor. She, she said, just keep repeating. And even as I read Psalms 91, I can, everywhere it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shelter of the Almighty. I kept saying, Sharon, that dwells in the presence. Everywhere that it says He, I kept putting my name there. And I kept speaking life to my body. Amen. Hallelujah. And that, because we can overcome fear by the word of God. Amen. 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 Because God sent his word out and he healed it. He sent his word. He sent his word to me. He sent his word to those that have cancer. So it's cancer, diabetes, whatever you've been diagnosed with, it has no power and no authority over you. You have to take power and authority over it. You cannot allow it to paralyze you. You cannot allow fear to paralyze you. For God said he is with you. He will strengthen you. He will give you the help that you need. He will be there for you. He is on your side. Amen. Hallelujah. He's on your side. So I can't encourage you today. Amen. You might be fearful about losing your apartment. You might be fearful about losing your home. You might be fearful about losing your job. You might be fearful about going to the doctor tomorrow. But just know that God is with you. Amen. No matter what the doctor says, no matter what the diagnosis says, God is bigger than any problem. Amen. He's bigger than any situation. But you got to trust him. You got to trust in his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just got to trust him. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Amen. Amen. Just praise him. If you're going through today, just praise him. Give him glory and give him honor. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to be lifted up. He don't want you to be down. He don't want you to feel down. He don't want you depressed. He don't want you to be depressed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at Joshua 1 and 9. Amen. God told him, he said, have not. I commanded you. Be strong and very courageous. Not just courageous, but very courageous. He said, do not be afraid. He said, do not be dismayed. He said, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God knew, amen, that Joshua would be afraid. He knew, amen. That's why it's 360 times, five times in the Bible, because he knew we were going to be afraid of something. Amen. He constantly reminded us. Amen. Don't be afraid. What God was saying to him and to us, he said, I have put this assignment on you and your destiny awaits you. And the enemy is going to try to stop you. But don't be scared. As they say in the world, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't give up. Stand your ground. 
Amen. Stand your ground, no matter what it looked like. He said, I am with you. That was not only for Joshua, but it's for us today. Amen. Because you know what? Biden, President Biden, good man, is not God. Putin is not God. Amen. They have to answer to God just like we do. Amen. God rules this world. Amen. He's a sovereign God. He's everywhere. Hallelujah. He's omnipresent. Amen. And I'm sure today they have some fears too. The whole cabin, the whole White House. Because you know what about that day of, of January 6th? They all were scared. I'm sure they ran. If they wasn't afraid, afraid they would have stood there, right? Amen. So they have a God to answer to too. But God was with them. Amen. We thank God for that. We thank God that he said he would never leave us alone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody getting anything out of this today? Is God speaking to your hearts today? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And in my closing, I pray that you are encouraged to walk in freedom from fear today. I pray that you will trust God. Amen. Not in your own, not in your flesh. Not in what your boss says, not in what your pastor says, but trust in God. Know that God is our refuge. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. If you're going to worry, why pray? If you're going to pray, you don't have to worry. Amen. But praying, you have to believe. And you have to believe God and trust him. And I got to the point that I overcame the fear of being sick. Now, I walk in healing. Because he is my healer. And we have to know that God is our healer. He's our deliverer. He's going to deliver this nation. Amen. He's going to. God is not, like I said, God is not asleep to what's going on in this nation. It's something that you, you, and you, and I have to do. And he's counting on us to do it. He's holding us accountable. Amen. Because perfect love casts out fear. And God is a God of peace. Amen. A peace, he will give you a peace, not the, like the world give you, but a peace which surpasses all understanding. When you don't know and you're walking in the unknown, God is with you. He'll be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Walk by faith and not by sight. God wants to deliver you today, and I pray that this word will bring deliverance upon your heart. Amen. That you don't walk in fear. Don't make your kids afraid of stuff. I don't like when people say, oh, the bigger man going to get you or somebody going to get you. You know, you, 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 you self-inflict them with a spirit of fear. You know, it's been bad enough. We grew up with it and, and, and walked around with it for years. But I thank God that he delivered me from all my fears. Amen. So don't say stuff to your kids. Be careful what you say to your kids. Season your words with grace. Let your kids know they can be anything they want to be. They can do anything they want to do. Amen. They can go to the top. Amen. The White House is not close to our children. Amen. The high places. Because God said he would sit us in high places. Amen. So we just have to trust him. Amen. And I only say what God tell me to say, and I sit down. So I pray that you have been blessed by the word of God today. Amen. Amen. And I put the service back into the hands of our deacons.